you ready to learn? Yes! Another living organism today? Yes! Okay, we're going to learn about another organism that can live in our pond water with our pond snail. snail. Mm -hmm. And we need to talk just a minute about some questions that you may have about the guppies that we're going to look at today and yes. what questions things that you'd like to find out about the guppies, okay? Um, I want to find out how big they are. How big they are. The kids have been real excited. They love that, you know, contact for the most part. Almost 100% of my kids have been willing. I had one that wasn't willing to touch the snail. But uh, that was exciting and a lot of really cute comments, you know, how it tickled in their hands and oh it is alive and all those kind of things you know to really bring it alive for them. What I've found with these specific uh, STC lessons is that the children can actually take on more ownership and it, it's important to them because they have something to take care of and I think a lot of children in today's world don't have anything to take care of. I think that's very an emotional needs being met not only educationally in terms of observing living organisms, but they now have the ability to watch something flourish and live and grow. And it's so much better because I can put this down, you know, and tell them to write a story, you know, write a story about your fish, give it a name, you know, what happens with the snail, you know, all those kind of things. And I, um, you can involve math and it's so much easier because it's just right there. They can see it, they can touch it. And a, a classroom, a class aquarium does not provide that. We're gonna look at our observations and think while you're sitting down, just think about some of the observations that you made about our guppy today. So I can record them here and then we're gonna compare some differences. Fishes move with their fins and their tail. Okay, so they move with fins, okay. They, they are fast. They're fast? They move fast? They move. Really okay, move fast. Okay, they live in a pond or water. Okay, Fresh so water. Okay. We can put that in Fresh the water. Wow. Because okay. snails live in Fresh water. Right. Fresh water. Okay. Now, if I do that, can you tell that this part in this middle part right here is the common yes. things that are shared? Tails. Anything else, Channel? They're both living things. Both of them live in what? Water. Water. They both have they tails. Have they they both live. move, even though they move differently. They both feel kind of I slimy see. when you pick them up. And they both have colors, and okay? And how do we know that they're living things? How do you know that? Lauren, how do you know that they're both living things? Because they're active and they move. Okay, because they, they move. Grow. Is there any other way that we know that they're living things? They living organisms, they eat. What else? They grow. Right, they, they grow. They need water, they need air. They, they grow, they need. They need food. Right. I, as an educator, I think that it's really important for students to be able to investigate their real world. One of the hardest things that we have, I think, in teaching reading is making life connections. And I just, I think it's just amazing the things that they connect to. Just like today, um, two of them were measuring each other. You know, who was the tallest? And that was something that came from looking at the guppies and deciding which of the guppies were longer in the aquarium. So they're transferring that over to their real life and they're seeing who's taller, who's tallest, you know. All those kind of things that's impromptu. And I can't write that kind of things in, you know, that doesn't, I can't do all that in my lesson plans. So, you know, when you've got it right there, when it's just right there, it's just amazing what they can